Hey, Mike here with Canadian Musician. Uh, the Canadian Radio, Canadian Radio Music Awards just wrapped up, and one of the big winners for Factor Breakthrough Artists of the Year, as well as one of the performers, is this fellow next to me, Derek, better known as Virginia the Vegas. How you doing, man? And congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm doing great. It's great to be back in Toronto. I've been in the States for the last little bit, so I'm happy to be home. Yeah. Fantastic. It's been an immense last uh, last year or two for you. Uh, uh, for folks who, I suppose, don't know the full story, uh, you were discovered by Wax Records through videos that you've been making online, co originally covers, then originals, I believe. Like, yeah. how, uh, for you, where did the, I guess, the story as it unfolded in the last two years begin? When did Wax Records first reach out to you? How did it develop? I mean, I'd been I'd been doing those covers. I did it as a project because I was trying to get discovered just as my name, which is Derek Baker, yeah. and I couldn't get anyone to pay attention to me. So I started this group called Virginia Vegas and I did covers and they noticed me and I spent about a year writing songs and we wrote We Are Stars and, and then with that, you know, it kind of unfolded. I went on a tour with Headley across Canada uh, playing as Alyssa Reed's bass player and, and from there we had just had a crazy year. You know, the song went top 10 here in Canada and went platinum. and. It was kind of something that I had to get caught up with. It happened very quickly as, as far as that goes. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. From that, like you were just saying there, like you, would, uh, you kind of skipped the whole uh, traditional development phase, or at least when it comes to live performance. Uh, it, it sounds like you kind of jumped right into, uh, as a live performer, kind of jumped right into a headlining tour with Headley, or at least I've seen you put it put it that way, I believe. Like, yeah. did, uh, well, first of all, was that the case? Was some of your first performances really opening for Headley? Or? I mean, like my first time performing performing a, like a song that was a single was, was that, but I mean, I grew up in bars from the age of 12, like playing in blues bars at open okay. mics and, yeah. and, and, you know, songwriter circles or blues jams or these kind of things. So I, like I, I'd been playing since a young kid, yeah. but I had to, I had to figure out real quick what it was like, you know, to be on, you know, to be on scale with, you know, the big dogs, the professionals. And it was nuts. I mean, like the second full show that I played as Virginia to Vegas, I opened up for Maroon 5. So that was, you know what I mean? Like it was really weird how that kind of happened and how quickly it happened. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of both worlds. Like I've been playing for a really long time for like 10 years, but uh, you know, in, on that scale, uh, not, in, not in those circles, no, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Did, did your mindset, not just the size of it, but going from, like you said, the, like the songwriter circles, the blues jams and that kind of stuff that you used to, to being under this new moniker, the new songs, the persona, everything that goes with it, it, it did it change your mindset as how you're approaching this music, how you're approaching it as a live performer? I think it kind of changed me, you know, it kind of like... I had, to, I had to readjust because I wasn't used to that and it, it was... You know, it was a great. Last year was a really crazy year, um, and it was it was great. But yeah, I did, there was definitely a lot of adjustments, and you know, something as little as how you address a crowd, or you know, little thing how you walk on a stage. You know, you don't think about that. You know how to walk on a stage, but like when you're watching a YouTube video in front of twenty thousand people, and you watch it back, and you're walking across stage, and you look like a T Rex, it's like okay, like maybe you you, you know you focus on those things. It, it's it's it brings you up to speed very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe that either in the works or you're recently wrapping up your debut LP, which will be the follow-up to the Volume 1 EP that came out, I think, last last year, if it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, first of all, what stage is that record in, in right now, and uh, how familiar will it be to people who who know the first EP? Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of in a funny stage. It's in a place right now where I've been in Nashville and L.A. writing songs, and I've got, like, a lot of songs and a lot of great stuff. Uh, it's a little bit of a departure from, from Volume 1. I think it's a better representation of me, and for people that are, are, are going to hear my new single that just came out, our story, it came out uh, two days ago. So people that will hear that will have a good sense of what this album's going to feel like. Um, it, I think it's I think it's a more legitimate uh, statement piece for music, and and I and I'm very proud of it. That's an interesting way of putting it. It's a, a statement piece yeah. for your music. Like when you were making the first EP, were you still trying to formulate in your head exactly what you were as a songwriter, as an artist, or at least what Virginia the Vegas this project was? Yeah, I think I think that's always happening, and I think in every I think in every stage as an artist, you're always trying to figure it out, and 
you always hear people talk like every album they're like yeah it's such a departure it's so different yeah. but I, I, that's just part of being that's part of growth of being an artist yeah. so yes it like it, it, it I was figuring it out and and right now maybe I'm saying I've, I've figured it out but I probably haven't and in the next one I'll be saying I'm, I'm figuring it out again too so I think it's it's always growing and evolving but I'm proud of the next step and I think yeah. I think it's I think it's really great work what was the songwriter or what has the songwriting process been for this new album are you working with co-writers or, uh, or yeah. is it a mixture yeah it is it's it's a lot of co-writes I mean there's one guy I write with a lot here in Toronto his name's Nathan Ferrero he was the uh, the singer in a band called the Midway State okay. uh, and he's a really good friend of mine he's a family friend and we've been friends for a long time we wrote we are stars together and don't fight the music uh, so we wrote the new single our story together and there's a guy down in LA that I work with a lot but the, the creative process has been really different. I mean, the creative process on Volume 1 was very small, and it was with just a select group of people, where this time it's kind of opened up doors, and it's allowed me to work with you know some artists and writers that I want to write with, and that I want to work with. And it's, and it's, been, a really, it's been a really, really cool, uh, it's been a really cool experience, for sure. What makes for you a writer Right. Obviously, you probably would just like their previous songs. You're like, I like their songs, so I probably would like working with them. But what, what for you makes for a ideal songwriting partnership, whether it's their personality or their skills? You know what? I think part of it's personality. I think part of it's skills. But I think every person that's writing a song brings something different to the table. And if you find people, when you get in a room and you write a song, if you can find people that bring something to the table that you're not, so when you get in those moments where there's a little bit of a lull, they can kind of pick it up. You know what I mean? So for me, that's a great thing because I know what I bring to a writing session. I know I can write a song myself, but when I get into a writing session as a co-write, I know what I bring into that and I know what I'm good at bringing into it and that's what I try to present. I don't try to present the other stuff. So when you meet people that, that make up with what you lack, I feel like that's what makes a good writing session for me. And uh, just to wrap up here, is there a, um, a, a tentative date or title or anything like that for the new record? Uh, we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. But it's it's coming. I don't I don't know. Do we know? Do we have any <laughs> idea? No. I, I mean, it's it not far. I mean, if we were to say a season, what season would it be? <laughs> later this year. Later this year, yeah. Yeah, later this year. All right. For sure. <laughs> Keep an eye out for it, uh, Derek. Uh, well, and check out our story. Exactly. Yeah. New single, Our Story, is out now. The uh, very recent winner of the Factor Breakout uh, Artist of the Year Award here at the Canadian Radio Music Awards. Uh, congratulations for that. Congratulations on all the success over the last couple of years. Thanks and so good luck with the new album, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Yeah.